What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another review, and this time we're taking a look at Don't Breathe, directed by Fide Alvarez, co-written by Fide Alvarez, and Roto Segues. If I said his name wrong, I, I am sorry. Uh, this film stars uh, Jane Levy and Stephen Lang. So the story of Don't Breathe is that simple. These three robbers break into a man's house who just happens to be blind. Unbeknownst to them, they made one big mistake on this night, because this former blind man just so happens to be a former... Uh, a former army veteran, and one by one, this blind man takes down takes down the thieves. Well, in so doing so, we find out that there's more to this blind man than what is that that we're that we're led to believe. So yeah, that's the overall story and premise of Don't Breathe. Uh, overall, I like this movie. I thought Don't Breathe was actually really really good. I think the first two acts of this movie are extremely strong. But once you get to that third act, that's where the movie kind of falls apart for me. It gets way too convoluted, way too confusing, and just a, it's very stupid in a lot of areas. <clears throat> but I will illustrate my complaints momentarily. Let me just get my positives out of the way first. Overall, the cast in this movie is very small and intimate, but really, really good. Uh, Jane Levy, who plays Rocky, I thought she was really well. She was really well cast in the role and did a great performance. I like her character as somebody who comes from from an abusive home, from an abusive home, and is only doing robberies as a way to save up money to leave that home. And she has this idea of going to California and taking her little sister with her to get away from their abusive mother and her deadbeat boyfriend. <clears throat> So, yeah, so right off the bat, Rocky has good intentions. And, like, she's doing questionable things, but she has good intentions in mind. And she also is flanked by her two friends, uh, Money and uh, Alex, who play a role in the burglary heist thing as well. Uh, Money's in it for more, more or less for, like, the thrill and the greed is what you get the, the notion from. While uh, Alex, the Lemonette's character, he's more, you know, he's more indifferent to it, so to speak. He's just doing it because you can tell that he has a crush on Rocky and he just wants to do whatever she does, in a sense. So like, yeah, like the three the three robbers, they're like they're not the best written characters, but they're written enough where you can understand their motivations and you know where they're coming from. And they and you can and you kind of root for them. Maybe not so much money, because he comes across as an asshole, but Rocky and Alex are the of the three are the two most likable. So in terms of liking these thieves. The movie does a decent job at making you like two and making you not care for much for the other one, which 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 is when everything goes to shit and they get to the blind man's house. You kind of you're kind of not so sad about money meeting his demise. <clears throat> so now that I covered that, let's talk about the blind man, Norman Nordstrom, Stephen Lang. Uh, yeah, Stephen Lang was awesome in this movie. I'm not gonna lie, he was fantastic. Uh, Stephen Lang. Stephen Lang, in his later years, has gotten these roles that he just sinks his teeth into, and you can tell the man is clearly just believes in what he's doing, and he's 100% committed to what he's doing. And Norm and the character of the blind man is no different. Stephen Nordstrom commits. Stephen Lang, I'm sorry. Stephen Lang commits to this role. He sinks his teeth into this role. He becomes this role. His performance as the blind man is both. It's both creepy. It's intense. It's a little. It has. He has a little bit of. Uh, he has some tragedy to him. And Stephen Lang does a fantastic job in the role of the character of Nordstrom. And I like how Nordstrom doesn't really have much dialogue until the very end of the movie, where he explains some of his motivations. But all throughout the movie, he just picks off these guys one by one by one. And this is where the. Uh, and this is where the intensity of his character comes from, because he's. So even though he's blind, he still has those army instincts. And that's how he's able to take down these thieves one by one. I mean, at first, we think he's just like this innocent, blind, old, old retired army vet who is just, you know, trying to live a peaceful life. But as the movie progresses, we find, that the, we find out the true dark side of what he's really hiding, what he's really all about. And like I said, I'm going to get to that momentarily. <clears throat> but yes, uh, Stephen Lang, even though I think third act of this movie is really a mess and kind of sucks, Stephen Lang's performance all throughout is fantastic. And when the man does actually get a chance to talk, what he says, it means something. And it's not, and he doesn't have these cheesy, quippy one-liners. Like, he actually has some, some good dialogue sequences where he explains his motivations. And that's where you feel the sympathy for his character. You don't agree with what he's doing, but you understand where he's coming from. 
even though I think it's very convoluted what he's actually what he's actually doing. But again, Stephen Lang was able to manage the both was able to manage both the creepiness of the Nordstrom character and the sympathetic qualities of the Nordstrom character, which almost in a way kind of turns him into like an anti-hero or an anti-villain. Like he's not really like the blind man is not pure evil, even though what he's doing is you know very even though what he's doing is uh, is grotesque. He's not doing it from a from a, from a from a point of view of somebody who's evil. He's doing it from the point of view of a, of a broken man trying to get back what he lost. <clears throat> so when you look at it from that aspect, yeah, you know, he's, he can come across as like he's like a sympathetic villain, is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> uh, so yeah, in terms of the cast and the blind man himself, good stuff, really good stuff. Um, the production qualities of this movie, I think, are really, really well done. Uh, Fide Alvarez did the Evil Dead reboot, and I'm a fan of that Evil Dead reboot. And I think Fide Alvarez is a very talented and very good filmmaker, and he applies those qualities to Don't Breathe. Now, with the Evil Dead reboot, he went more for just gross-out gore and grotesque. With this, this is where he gets to show. This is where he gets to gets to test his skills with suspense and creating atmosphere and tension. And I thought he did a very good job in all those departments. Like, this is a very well-directed movie. It has good atmosphere, good suspense, good intensity. It's over. It's overall, from a production value, I have no complaints for this movie. Um, from, like I said, from a writing standpoint, the first two acts, to me, are really, really strong. Then once you get to the third act, for me, that's where the movie falls apart. <clears throat> and now that I've gotten all my positives out of the way, which are a lot, I'm going to get to my negatives, which are a lot. So, we get to the third act of the movie, and it's revealed that, uh, well, it, in, in the opening prologue, and when we first get introduced to the blind man, when the kids are looking up the, their, next, uh, their next victim to, to steal from, it's established that he lost his daughter to a drunk driver and received a large settlement, hence why these three thieves want to break into the man's house. They want the money. Uh, so once they break into the house and the blind man attacks them and he kills money by shooting him in the jaw, which was very intense, uh, all the chasing happens, which was really a lot of fun and well done. With the character of Alex having so many fake out deaths, it became a running gag. It was almost as if the director and the writer had no idea if they wanted Manette's character to live or die. And they finally decided to let him die in the last three minutes of the movie. So, so that's, that's that. We find out that the blind man is keeping the killer of his daughter underneath his house in a basement with the idea of having her reproduce the child that she took from him by pretty much artificially inseminating her with his own semen. This whole thing is completely ridiculous. It's completely stupid. It's completely convoluted. I did not like it when I first saw this movie and I don't like it now upon a rewatch. I think the blind man's, I, I understand the blind man's motivation, but I just think it was presented in a way that was just really just stupid, borderline silly. I understand that you want to get back the daughter that you lost, but the way he's, the way the writers went about it is completely confusing. I appreciate the fact that they did not turn him into a, into a rapist. He, like, there's, there's, like, it's like there's a line of dialogue where they went out of their way to have the man say, listen, I'm not a rapist, and I never forced my way on her. You know, I, I appreciate that for going that way, but it's very convoluted. Like, okay, so you, you, you're you going to artificially inseminate this woman, keep her in your basement for nine months until she gives you a baby? That's just completely random. Like, I understand he's having trouble coping with the loss, but there are so many different things he could have done in order for, in order to get this to happen. I mean, in the sequel... The sequel did a better job at, re at having him recreate his family, but the way he went about it in this movie, as, in terms of a standalone movie, not thinking about sequels, it's just really weird. And I just don't like it. I, I thought it, it, it... This, to me, is the weakest aspect of the entire movie is the third act and the, his overall motivation for keeping this woman uh, hostage. I mean, I can understand you want to keep her hostage as a, as a way to seek revenge, but by having... but by keep it by, by having her want to produce your child that's just i don't know i just found it to be extremely weird and it just it doesn't ruin the movie but it just it just convolutes a lot of things <clears throat> i mean i mean and then you get to the end where the old man supposedly dies after getting to the final confrontation with uh with rocky 
but it's revealed through a newsreel that he survived the gunshot wound and is in his unstable hospital condition as Rocky and her sister board a plane to leave Detroit to go to California. <clears throat> so yeah, like the ending is pure sequel bait, but and but that is what it is. So yeah, so despite so with two strong acts, a weak third act and a sequel bait ending, I overall think that Don't Breathe is actually a very solid movie at the end of the day. And that's why I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. I recommend Don't Breathe. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments sections down below. Like the video and subscribe. And I'll check you back next time for more.